A lot of times when we study quantum mechanics, it's easy to get bogged down in the mathematics and uh, you sort of lose sight of the big picture. So here we're going to talk about the big picture of quantum mechanics. The idea here is to see where quantization comes about. We talked about four uh, experiments that could not be explained by classical physics around the turn of the last century and how they could be explained if we introduced quantization. So where does this quantization come from? Well, here are the three steps. First of all, uh, de Broglie proposed that particles have wave-like properties. This means that a particle can be represented as a wave. And this is the wavelength, the de Broglie wavelength, of a particle that is moving uh, with a particular momentum mv. So just let's rewrite this perhaps as h. That's the same Planck's constant that was proposed by Planck in 1901, divided by the mass of the particle times velocity. So any moving particle has associated with it a wavelength. Any moving particle has a wavelength. The second step is to say that these particles uh, can have, uh, have to obey a wave equation. And we'll call this wave equation the Schrodinger equation, which we'll develop in a little while. Uh, h psi equal e psi. The whole point is that these particles, uh, they're not, can't be anything. In fact, these particles, which we represent by waves, have to obey the Schrodinger equation. And then the third major, this is the major point, restrictions on this wave that represent the particle gives rise to quantum effects. All right, so let's uh, develop that uh, a little bit more here. So we have a particle, and the particle is moving with some velocity v. And this particle then is associated with some sort of uh, wavelength lambda. Now suppose there are no constraints on the motion of this particle. So it can just go back and forth all over the universe, and so on. So are there any constraints on the wavelength of this particle? Well, the answer is no. Uh, if the uh, particle is not constrained. In other words, it can go anywhere. Then lambda, the wavelength of the particle, or the associated frequency of the particle, can be anything. However, if you constrain the particle, so let's uh, say constrain the particle, and we'll use this example later on. We're going to constrain this along a one dimension, say from zero to a. All right. So it, we're going to constrain the particle by forcing the particle to be right here and forcing the particle to be right here at the edges of this uh, subspace of one dimensional space. So up here we said, well, the particle can go anywhere, but now we're constraining the particle to be right in between here. That means that the wave function, if the particle, or sorry, the wave, if the particle is represented by a wave, then the wave has to start here and it has to, go, and it has to end there. So there's one possible wavelength. This wavelength will be uh, twice the, uh, the length here, a. So the wavelength here will be 2a. So if we go to 2a, we make a complete wave. And again, we're constraining. Uh, the particle uh, to be uh, fixed at the ends of the one-dimensional box. All right. Now let's uh, try to do another one. Well, the only the second one we could do is go up and then down and up. So in that case, this the wavelength here is equal to that length a. But note that we can't have anything between 2a and a. We can't have something in between, because if we have something in between, we won't, uh, it won't meet those constraints we put on the wave function to be, to start there and end there. Uh, this constraints on the wave. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself and calling these wave functions, but we'll stick with waves right now. All right, and then let's look at another one. So one could go up and down and up like this. So here, the wavelength here uh, can be um, a over 2. So up and down, let's see, go up and yes, that's a over 2. Up and down and up, yeah, something like that, and so on. 
the key point is that because you put constraints on this wave, wavelength is now can only be certain values. In other words, wavelength is quantized. And if you associate wavelength with frequency, and then you associate frequency with energy, you come to the conclusion that the energy is quantized. That's the big picture of quantum mechanics. By making particles I have wave-like properties and putting some constraints in the wave, you quantize energy.